Hey guys, I got in a new scope from UUQ. This is called the Leopard Speed. It's a low power variable optic, but I figured we'd uh, do a quick unboxing. We'll go over all the features and specifications. We'll get it mounted something, get out to the range, take some shots with it, get some thoughts on it overall. Um, this looks very similar to the Vortex. I think theirs was called a Strike Eagle maybe, um, but obviously you can see these are available in different sizes. So if you need something that's maybe a little bit shorter distance or if you need to go out a little bit further, uh, one to eight by 24, that's probably good for, you know, your close quarter stuff, you know, 50 yards. And then you can probably go out to, I don't know, maybe 400, 500 yards. Uh, we have 11 levels of red illumination, aircraft grade, aluminum construction, it uh, looks like it comes with an offset mount, which is kind of like a cantilever mount. Just show some sizes again. Uh, IPX7 waterproof rating, 1200G shock proof. The uh, lens has multiple coatings on it, which usually allows for more clarity and more light to come through. But we'll get this unboxed, and I will let you know that these were already cut here or ripped. I did not do that, but let's get this thing out of here, see how it's packed. And so the box actually is very, very sturdy. It's pretty nice. Some pretty thick foam there. And then that's how everything's packaged. All right, got everything out of the box. We obviously have the scope here. We have the cantilever mount. We have some ring adapters. Not really sure why they include those. We have a warranty card. This does give you a year warranty. Uh, you can also scan that if you want to get more information on them. Uh, we have a lens cloth, manual, and then two tools. The larger one is for the actual ring itself to mount the scope to the ring. And then the smaller one is to mount the cantilever mount to your rail of your rifle and we have a panasonic cr2032 battery let's show you guys some close-ups of the scope itself again it does come with flip-up style lens covers um, those are actually pretty decent they feel like they're a, a kind of firm rubber here and then a plastic here those are actually a pretty decent quality though. And I'll show you the other one here. So you just, you just loosen that up. They pop right up for you. The scope is about 10 and three quarter inches long. If you throw those lens caps back on, it's just over 11 inches long. And I'll grab a weight of everything. Looks like we got 26.3 ounces. I want to quickly just kind of run through and look at the different parts here. Uh, we have our ocular adjustment right here. See how stiff this is. A little bit stiff, but very manageable. Again, the purpose of that is if you, you know, set your magnification and you're still a little bit blurry or fuzzy or anything like that, you can change this just a little bit to bring you back into focus or make things more clear. And it is branded, which I always appreciate. Um, we have our magnification up here. And again, it's a one to eight. That is very stiff right now, but that's the first time trying to move it. I'll probably have to loosen that up a little bit before I even mount it. And again, uh, we have a second focal plane. Um, what that means is Basically, as you make your adjustments on your magnification here, your target will obviously get closer or further away, depending on which way you're moving it. But your reticle inside of the scope is going to stay the same um, no matter how you adjust your magnification. Move along. I'm pretty sure this one has a 30 millimeter tube. And moving on along, we have our windage and elevation adjustments. These are pull style. So you pull it out. very positive very audible there's a noticeable stop with every turn 
you just push it back in to lock it. Those are actually nice. Over here we have our battery door. When I got that weight earlier, I didn't have the battery in it. I probably changed it by a percentage of an ounce or something. And then we have our 11 levels of brightness. Let's see what that feels like. So again, a very positive engagement. Again, everything is brand new right now. So that is pretty stiff to even turn that like it almost leaves marks. But there's our 11 levels. And we'll see what that looks like here in a bit. Quickly show you guys the cantilever mount here. Uh, there's one Picatinny rail spot right there. And then this will obviously clamp down on the rest of the rail. Um, I did notice on mine, there's something that's stuck down in here. So I'm going to actually take this all the way off uh, and see what that is. I don't know if that's just like some kind of goop or if it's exactly what that is. But so I got that off and that's just like excess grease. They have springs and all these holes. And where those screws go into there, it's just a bunch of excess grease. So I'll kind of clean that up a little bit. And the last thing I want to say before I get the battery in and get it mounted is that it does have threads there. So you can put a sunshade on it if you have one. Got all that extra grease cleaned up out of there. I think that most people who are buying a scope like this are going to be putting it on an AR. So I do have an AR style rifle here. I see there's nothing there and no magazine in it, so we're safe. Wanted to show you guys that in the mount itself, you probably have at least a full inch that you can adjust that. I'm probably gonna have to pull this rear side off and move the whole thing back another inch or so, so that I have the proper eye relief, but I just wanna show you that there is a lot of room for adjustment in there. Yeah, in order for me to get the proper eye relief, I did have to remove my rear sight so i just took the front off too but um i think they say the eye relief is around three and a half inches or so all right so i get a battery put in this I'll try to let you guys see what that reticle looks like and then we're going to head out to the range and put some rounds through it all right guys out at the range here this morning with that uuq leopard speed one to eight by 24. i'm probably going to do i don't know maybe 50 to 100 rounds or so total through it Obviously get the thing sighted in, um, kind of see what that glass looks like outside here and kind of see overall how it performs. I'm set up down there just at 50 yards away. Um, I still do have some clay pigeons back there at 100 from last time I was here. Might take a few shots of those too, but I really just want to get sighted in at 50 yards. I don't know why this is always so difficult for the iPhone to pick up, uh, but this is the one times magnifications just kind of want to show you guys what that reticle looks like you can see the different uh notches down below it you got the dot there in the middle of it and this is the four times magnification again i know it looks kind of blurry through the camera trust me it's not blurry in real life but i don't know if it's just the magnification or what screws up the iphone camera but we'll try to go up to eight next very difficult for me to capture this for you guys, but this is the eight times magnification here.
All right, guys, so I've had this UUQ Leopard Speed for a few weeks now. I had a chance to get out to the range and use it and just wanna share some of my thoughts with you on it. So the first thing I'll say is that like the overall build quality is actually really, really good on it. The fit and finish um, is fantastic. It feels like they're using premium materials. The anodization is pretty well perfect on it. Everything as far as the lettering and all the markings, everything is centered you can just tell that their quality control process is really good. A few years ago, I had this Bushnell AR scope. The UUQ, I feel like, is a better scope than what the Bushnell was. I like that that magnification does go from 1 to 8. I will say, though, that the adjustment ring or whatever is still pretty stiff. I probably have turned this thing probably 200 times over the last three weeks or so. And it's still pretty stiff. I almost think like a throw lever uh, might help because if you're shooting and you need to adjust during your shooting, you pretty much have to take your eye away and be able to get your hand up there to, to move it around. I like that it has that BDC reticle. Um, they call it like a Gorilla Dot BDC. Um, and that just means it's the bullet drop compensator. And I don't know how well, if, if that even showed at the range. It was so cold that morning, but um, I'll put up a picture of it here just to kind of let you guys see what it looks like. And when you have the battery in, again, it has 11 levels of brightness. Basically, it's a circle dot, and then it also illuminates uh, the BDC reticle as well. Um, so it's for like fast target acquisitions, just like imagine a red dot on a rifle, either tube style or reflex style or whatever, and you would have a circle dot. That's basically what it looks like. And if my picture didn't show it clearly, this is basically what that circle dot looks like. So yeah, the circle dot kind of helps you with close quarter stuff, you know, maybe 25 yards, 50 yards, whatever. And then the BDC um, helps you with longer range stuff. I don't know, maybe going out to three or 400 yards. My range, I can't test that distance, but that's usually what a BDC is good for. And that reticle is etched versus wired. And usually the more of the premium line of scopes is etched. I found that the eye relief to be pretty good. I thought it was somewhere maybe around three, three and a half inches. There was a little bit of room uh, for error for your cheek movement. Going back to that uh, reticle again, I like that basically the reticle is always there. Even if your battery were to fail or something like that, the reticle always stays uh, visible to you. I like that these turrets are toolless um, and they're locking, easy to unlock, just literally pull up on it. Um, very positive clicks. Um, so again, I know I showed it earlier, but every turn you can just feel that stopping. I like that this scope comes with pretty high quality lens caps. Again, this is some type of rubber here, but it still feels very, very durable. It's like a thicker type of rubber and then the plastic up here I like that they include this really high quality cantilever mount. Um, a lot of budget scope manufacturers will include some scope rings and they are pretty much just throw away, uh, but not this mount. This is actually really nice. So if I had any complaints about the scope, one is that that magnification ring is a little bit stiff and I would like to see a throw lever on it. And then two, just the overall weight is a little bit more um, than some other scopes that I've had similar to this. And I do think that maybe that one piece cantilever mount might be the difference there. Uh, but I still think it's worth it because this style of mount is so much better than uh, two rings. So at the time of me recording this video, the Leopard Speed is coming in at $180 and it's available on Amazon. And to compare that to something from Vortex that has almost the same features, you can see it's $395. And even the Bushnell that I had a few years ago is $365. So I think $180 for this is a steal of a deal. So I will leave that Amazon link for the scope down in the video description if you want to find out more information on it. 
Um, if you guys found this video helpful or informative in any way, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And that's going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.